Welcome to Teach Simple Podcast, where we focus on providing simple solutions in the classroom. Teach Simple, a podcast that believes simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. We're dropping gems, family. My brother Calvin Nellum is keeping it simple for the culture. Education, politics, science, physics, he's talking about it all. Just keep it simple for our brother, man. Teach Simple Podcast. Enjoy, family. All right, good evening, good evening. So this is the first session of Tomorrow Today, and we are excited to be with you all um, this evening or where whatever time of day that you are listening and wherever you are listening from. So we are Tomorrow Today, which is now moved from a weekly discussion to more a podcast, which is meant to dive deep into conversations that look at the tomorrow through the lens of today. So what we really want to do is have some very deep um, conversations on education and just really figure out, okay, well, what is it that we are doing right now today in this moment to have a positive impact on tomorrow? So a few of us educators have gotten together to do that. So we hope that you enjoy our conversation this evening. Hello, I'm Calvin Nellum. Happy to be with y'all. Good to see my family. Everyone, I'm Erica, and it's so wonderful to see everyone excited about our conversation this evening. Hey, all. I'm Jennifer Ricks, and I am super excited for tomorrow today, and we look forward to what's to come. Hi, everyone. I am Adrian Waller, and I am beyond the moon. Happy to be here with you today. I am James Skinner, and I'm incredibly happy to be here tonight to enjoy this conversation we're about to have. All right. Well, let's go ahead and dive into our very first question of discussion. So um, what's the difference between schooling and education? Or what's the difference between schooling versus education? I know we have um, actually had this conversation before, so I'm interested and discussing it again, um, because we may have some different perspectives, especially a lot of things that, you know, is going on um, currently in the news. So let's see, Jay, you want to go ahead and start us off? Yeah, uh, of course. So when I think of schooling versus education, when I think of a school, I think of a building, or I think of a structure or a place that uh, students and administrators and teachers go. But when I think of the term education, I think of a, like a limitless concept. Um, it's more self-directed and it's empowering and it's where true learning takes place. So when I'm thinking of education as something, yes, that can be done in a school, but it's also something that can be done outside of that physical structure. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Adrian. Um, and just to go piggyback off of what um, Jennifer said, I think of it as really that structure versus unstructured. And so school is a structured, hopefully, to education, right? So it's how it's packaged, how it's sold, how it's presented. And so it's the structure, whether it's that building structure, or maybe it's a digital structure, whether it's the curriculum, but it's always it's Taking the education and learning can happen in all these different ways. And schooling is the structure in which a group or a person has decided it will happen. Calvin, I see that your hand is raised. <laughs> no, I was just clapping for my sister. Absolutely. You know, my mother used to say, you know, education is different from being a teacher, right? Being an educator is different from being a teacher, right? Education from schooling. And she used to always tell mm -hmm. me like, you know, a teacher just teaches the content area, but an educator, Calvin, an educator is gonna teach you like, you know, how to survive. They're gonna give you not only the, uh, the scientific tools, but they're gonna teach you how it's uh, critical in the world. They're gonna teach you the joy behind it. They don't teach you how your identity is representative in a science, right? It's like a teaching to the entire child. Um, and I love Adrian always just putting things together, right? Because we need schooling, honestly, to, uh, mm -hmm. to, to get the education that we need. And so this, honestly, they're not mutually exclusive as we always present them to be. As far as the difference between schooling and education, um, I mean, for me, uh, of course, uh, the structure versus like the knowledge that you end up obtaining. So mm -hmm. education is just that knowledge that you receive. Um, 
but what I'm noticing now, just like the differences between schooling and education, like the structure that we have schooling as of now is almost treated like a business. Um, and I feel like education, you're never going to treat that like a business. It's going to be a, you know, something that you can carry with you. Structures are always going to change, but the education, the knowledge that you obtain will always stay constant. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with you on that, James. I see um, education as an ongoing process. It's something that, you know, it's a continuous cycle. Um, I think about schooling as something that maybe um, has a pause or it somewhat stops. So we start off with like pre-K, we go to elementary school, middle school, we or junior high school. Then we have um, high school per se, and then we have college. And it's kind of like a structure, a formal structure, but education is something that is always evolving. I feel like myself, I'm continuously evolving every day, just learning something every day. Um, something new about a content or something new about a particular topic of interest. So it's something that is always evolving versus something that kind of, you know, it stops at a certain point. So I definitely agree with you on that. I like that. I think, um, and kind of going off of one of the things that Calvin mentioned is schooling is almost like, you know, you go to, you go to school, you sit in class and you listen to what the teacher is teaching and you're learning these new skills, but then education is that application piece. It's like, okay, now that I have this, how am I going to apply it to the real world? How am I going to use what I've gained outside of these walls? So then when I finish elementary or middle high school and college, because I'm going out into the real world now and I have this schooling that has been transformed into education now i can continue to learn and to be a, a, a to continue to be a learner and to continue to grow really because of the skills that i have acquired um, that has allowed me to be a learner and to continue that process mm -hmm. i would just jump in there and say school has the opportunity to amplify or hinder the process of education, right? Ooh, that's good. And so, that's good. Yeah. You know, so like when school is done right, it makes education more accessible, more yeah. relatable, long lasting, you know, impactful, you know, world changing. But when it's, when it starts to struggle, when it starts to, you know, become more of a more system focused, you can start to prevent education, hinder, start making divisions isolating of what students are actually learning. So I think that the idea is that school should be a structure that amplifies, but uh -huh. if we're not careful and we're, we don't manage it and we're not intentional about thinking about it, it could actually hinder what the real purpose of it is in the first place, which is the education. I agree, I agree. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think of Mark Twain's quote, you know, I won't let my schooling get in, get interfere with my education. That part. Yeah. And um, again, I, I, I love that, Adrian, because I, I also feel as if, you know, um, education is how we learn our, our background, our values, things that matter to us the most, um, how we actually go out into society and apply, you know, everything that we've learned. Um, and if we don't have a great foundation with that, you know, it can hinder us, you know, in, in our process. So I definitely agree with you on that. So our next question for this evening is, why is education so narrow and linear? All right, so Adrian, would you like to start us off on that particular question? Sure, I think this goes back to what I was saying before about the fact that edu uh, school, so education I don't think is narrow and linear. I think school is. So let me just like preface that, that I don't think it's education. I think education is actually wide. You know, it has, yes. if you think of it as a thought bubble, you have this bubble in the center and just like all these pings off with things going off and off. Schooling though, I do think is very narrow and um, linear. And I think that's because it's a means to create a structure. And once you start getting into like structures, 
um, whether you're, let, let's just think of a building, right? When you have a building structure, you have to create a foundation, it's, you know, because you need a strong foundation. You're going to scaffold or build all of those. Um, I'm not a builder. So, you know, all the beams and, you know, like uh, right. important things that are going to stabilize it, then you're going to create the floors. And so although buildings look different, the crux of it, the structures are basically the same, you know, and mm -hmm. I think that that's the same idea with school versus education is that you're trying to, you're constantly trying to create a structure, which mm -hmm. starts to make it more narrow and more linear right. um, of something that is so vast and so big and that impacts each of us differently, right? So like I've been in a few discussions where we're talking about what is the purpose of school? Mm -hmm. And I bet you if you sat and you asked like 30 educators, you would probably get 60 different answers, right? Mm -hmm. not, not just 30, you would get 60. And it's because what the structure looks like um, is different for everybody. Like I firmly became an educator because I didn't just want to teach content. I wanted to teach character. I wanted to teach humans and I wanted to make better people who went out into the world. To mm -hmm. do that, it can't just be about reading, writing, arithmetic, it has to be about all these other things. And so, but not everybody believes that there's a, there's a movement right. of people who believe that like, we need to be separating these things and there should be spaces for character building that are different than spaces for, you know, academic building. And I don't believe that. So once you start thinking about structures, structures have to answer that question of like, what do we, what do we value in education? What are going to be our priorities and so it starts to narrow it by creating something that's going to allow that type of education to happen because it's really only pulling from a narrow part of education so it seems narrow education seems narrow because of school when it's really the other way around mm -hmm. i definitely agree with you on that go ahead jane uh i was about to say like facts um i've never had to use pythagorean theorem as an adult um but, you know, we were constantly like hammered that uh, within school and we had that just narrow, like when it comes to schooling, it was so incredibly narrow. And it's because the structure is just based on a test. Mm -hmm. And that's like, I think the biggest difficulty when it comes to that is like trying to like overcome that. But we can't because of No Child Left Behind Act. So we just uh, we have so many schools that are structured based on the grades they're going to get from a test. So we're not educating them on things that matter. So it's like we need to. Like Adrian said, we need to be able to teach, you know, character and things of that nature. But it's like the system, the system at hand is going against what we should do as educators. And that is probably the most like irritating thing for me is just we have to we want to raise a new generation, a better generation than what we had. But how can we do that when the system wants everybody just to sort of stay the same? And as we've seen with Florida. And all, all the issues that are going on like here in like Florida and then other Southern states, uh, it's making it increasingly difficult to be able to have those open dialogues and to be able to have like, you know, a better structure, a different structure to teach the character because they, <clears throat> they want the same subjects taught the same way and then that's it. Mm -hmm. And it's a weapon, right? They're using schooling to keep education narrow. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like they're using schooling, the power of the textbooks that they have. They're use, you know, they're using their 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 powers to change words to make slavery not as bad. You understand what I mean? Like they're they're using all like their their school, like this, like it's like a it's like a tool, right? To 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 make it narrow. You know what I'm saying? And 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 they're, I, w I would say honestly, they're failing. You know, because I feel like what they're trying to do will never work because it's the world is just changing, right? It's inevitable. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just showing how the, the, the quote unquote school, the value of school is also losing its value um, because people mm -hmm. are just questioning like, is this, I mean, was, we, we were gonna talk about Nicole Hannah Jones, right? UNC, they consider, I feel like they consider academic suicide by doing what they did. You mm -hmm. understand what I mean? Because you will never have another you know, lady, as to her standard, will ever try to go to that school again because of what you, I mean, I'm just saying, but I don't want to jump into it. Uh, I mean, I agree. Uh, so 
thinking about that question and I'm sure you all have seen the little meme and it has the word success on it and then one of the pictures just like this straight line and then you have the other picture next to it and it's like all these little mm -hmm. squiggly lines and to me that's kind of how I envision schooling versus education so you have this one side where it's like, okay, we want these cookie cutter classrooms and schools and students to follow this path that we have designed and try to concoct into this perfect little box. But on the other side, it's like, we are not that, you know, we come from different backgrounds, you know, whether it's financially, you know, economically, whatever the situation, culturally, whatever the situation may be, we are not cookie cutter individuals. So to try to force us into that box, you know, there, there's going to be some backlash from that. And it's almost like an oxymoron because you want to have this linear piece, but then in the classroom, you want us to dif differentiate. You want us to meet the child where they are. So then it's like, well, what do you want? Like either you want this cookie cutter piece or you're wanting us in here differentiating and actually trying to make these students successful. And like you said, Calvin, to teach the whole child, but how are we going to do that in a linear, you know, space? Like we have to be able to have that freedom to meet students where they are and to support them academically and emotionally. And it's just like teaching across content. If we want to, you know, bring reading into math and math into science, then we need to bring SEL into math and into science. And we need to bring, you know, different cultural dynamics into math and into science. So it needs to be more like a melting pot versus, you know, a salad bowl or whatever they're trying to make it like it has to like make it make sense like you can't say you want this and expect us to do this but there's that constant tug of war you know jay when i, I think about the example you use it's like we should scrap the straight line and instead expand that picture to have all these wiggly lines and start putting houses at different points along that wiggly mm -hmm. line so that's what school should be, a check-in with you as you're going on this back forth loop de loop. Right. How do we check in? Yes. With, how do we say, oh wait, uh, yeah, we need to, mm -hmm. you know, get you back instead of saying, let's create a new road. Let's say, no, here's the road you're on. How can I be an asset to you on that journey at these various different points? When you're here, there's somebody to check in with you. When you're here, there's somebody to check in with you instead of it being like, your line is crooked, make it straight. Because I feel like that's what yes. we're trying to do. You know, that old mm -hmm. adage, you know, a square peg into a round. I never remember which way it goes because it neither way does it work. But, you know, a right. square <laughs> peg into a round hole, whatever it is, you know. <laughs> I feel like that's what education is constantly trying to do. Instead of saying, we have a square peg, we have a round peg, we have a triangle peg. Yep. How do we connect you with, a, you know, a triangle opening how do we connect you with a round opening because mm -hmm. i also think that we're trying to make all schools the same and they shouldn't be because yeah. Yeah. kids aren't the same so like having a diversity in school offerings would be a reflection of the diversity that's in education and learning mm -hmm. yeah that's like that you know if you like everybody is a genius right the quote or something like that says but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree you know it's like they're just gonna live its whole life feeling stupid or dumb or something like that. But that's basically like the same thing. Like, like why? Like why why would we put that much pressure on students and on teachers and on parents when that's just not realistic? Most definitely. And I feel like, you know, the world is just full of multiple learning opportunities for our students. And we should not have to limit our students, our teachers, staff. The, you know, to fit into a small box when the world is just this huge learning platform. And I feel like we should just go for it. Like students should be able to have an opportunity to just do what they love. I know I read, um, I actually wrote it down. There was a quote by um, Tony Gaskins Jr. And I don't know if you all are familiar with him, but he's like a motivational speaker. He's an author. And um, one of the things that he stated was, if you don't build your dream, someone will hire you to help build theirs. Um, and that just kind of goes into what we're talking about. You know, like we have students that have 
dreams and aspirations. But I feel that when we look at school, it's just so linear. It's just one way. We teach our students that there's preschool, elementary school, middle school, high school, college, military, that's it. You know, but when we look at, um, you know, all of these successful entrepreneurs who maybe didn't finish school. I know Malcolm X, he didn't finish school. And look at the platform that he used to become such a success in our society. Um, you know, but those are the things that we don't necessarily, you know, look at. We just kind of look at it as you have to go this way and then that's that. So. <laughs>
because I know I'm responsible, right? And so to me, that's like that shift between just saying, yes, I'm responsible. It's like little kids say, I did it. And then also mm -hmm. saying, but mommy, don't put me on punishment. But you just said you did it. Like, you know, like that those go together. And I think America likes to say, oh, yes, we, I'm going to say I did it. But like, if you're not willing to do all the steps that go along with it, it it's performative responsibility because it's not matched with any accountability. And I, I feel like that's a lot of what's happening is this ability to say, yes, it happened. But no, I won't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then real quick, before we get to Jay, the 1619 Project is literally like the last day of slavery, but it, was, it wasn't that day. It was when these slaves who literally didn't know they were free, right, because of a broken system, mm -hmm. they thought they were still slaves, right? Mm -hmm. and, and again, like just acknowledging that is an embarrassment. You're right. You know, so it, 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 that's that's already so the, the date itself is an embarrassment. So imagine all the other stuff they have to hold the, themselves accountable. But go ahead, Jay. I was just going to um, expound on what Adrian was saying as far as that accountability piece, because it's interesting now, you know, that they made Juneteenth a federal holiday. So it's almost like, OK, well. I'm not going to take, be, you know, be held accountable for this. So mm -hmm. instead of giving you what we know we should give you, let's find something yeah. else that maybe will keep you a little quiet for a while or may, you know, appease you just a little bit and just kind of throw that out there. And then if you don't fully accept it, then we can say, well, we tried to do mm -hmm. something and it wasn't good enough. So you know, there, there's definitely that piece, which is a continued slap in the face, you know, with that. So not saying that it's not appreciated because, okay, cool. That should have been done a long time ago, but you know, whatever, but that's not the root of the issue. I need you to get to the root of the issue. I need you to dig into that wound, go ahead and hurt a little bit, put a little alcohol in it, let it burn a little bit, clean that mm -hmm. on out. And then mm -hmm. we can, you know, begin the healing process and move on from there. So the thing with Hannah Jones was a complete slap in the face. And, you know, I feel personally, my personal opinion, I feel like, yeah, it was intentional because right. guess what? You threw a rock into that pack of wolves and, a, and it, it hit a dog and it hollered. So that was their reaction to that. And so now it's like, okay, well, now we're getting all this backlash. Now yeah. it could hurt our attendance you know, people enrolling at our campus. So now you messing with our money. So now let's figure out something that we can do to backtrack and, mm -hmm. and cover ourselves. But now it's almost like, okay, I wanted you to buy me this a long time ago and now I don't even want it anymore. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know. It's like their version of the company pizza party. Like how companies are just like, you know what, instead of giving you the benefits, instead of giving you this acknowledgement, instead of mm -hmm. instead of just telling you the truth and we're just gonna give you a pizza party so you shut up. We're just, I hope you enjoy pepperoni. We're only having one flavor here. You don't have a choice, but hey, it's fun. We're cutting the slices in half. How about that? You have Pepsi to the side, enjoy. That That's how I feel. Oh, you don't like me? Pull off the pepperoni and still eat them juice that are sitting on it because I thought that much, <laughs> but, uh, thought that much about you. You know, like right. you keep going with that analogy, right? Like, uh -huh. oh, oh, you're, you're lactose intolerant. Mm, pull off the cheese. What well, what are you really left with? Like, and not really thinking about how do we do this in a way that's actually going to like make a positive difference. Right. And I can't even eat the crust because it's got gluten in it. So. <laughs> Right. right. You're name like eight people who we just had, like, just like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. I um I recently just saw a meme speaking of that, Adrian, and it was just talking, it was breaking down like um, you know, the workplace. So it was saying like most of these corporations, so you know, they give out t-shirts and they give out pizza, they give out breakfast, lunch, um, all of these different things. But we, they never really pay employees what they're worth. So they're going to give you all the t-shirts you want. They're going to give you all the pizza parties. They can add an extra little 15 minute break in there. They may even say, hey, you know what? You are, Because you were here all week, you earned the right to go home 15 minutes early today on Friday. Or you can have a jeans day on Friday and wear a spirit shirt. You know, but they never really pay employees what they're that. really worth. 
And I see that with this particular situation, you know, it's like, we're going to compensate in other ways, but we're not going to recognize and take accountability for what actually happened and what and how we need to move forward. Like Jay was stating, like, what do we need to do to move forward and, you know, progress? Um, because that's what this is all about. We need to start making some progression, um, you know, seriously, because this is just, um, it's, it's out of control. It's out of order. Yeah, and we know the data behind like people who, particularly women, but black women, aren't going to ask for what we're worth either. Like, mm -hmm. right, we we constantly undervalue ourselves, and that's almost taken advantage of, right? So, like, there's mm -hmm. so many statistics about like we won't even apply for jobs that we're qualified for because we'll be missing one little thing that's on the list, and we'll go, oh, well, that means it says it lists five different things or requirements. We'll have three or five and say we can't apply. Mm -hmm. A white man will look at that. They'll have one or two and say, oh, I'm made for the job. And like, we don't understand. Wow. And then so we've weeded ourselves out. And then on top of that, then we weed ourselves out by um, okay. not commanding the salary that is what we're actually worth. Like, mm -hmm. no, I'm worth this. And so this is what I should be paid. It's, Absolutely. oh, you offered me this. I'm going to take that. And so like the company's playing right into it. It's like, oh, I know you don't even know what you're worth. I know what you're worth, but I'm not going to give it to you and you're mm -hmm. not going to ask. So let's keep this going. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and, and doesn't it just put, doesn't it just like, it says foul play for like all, I feel like for, if they can do this with Nicole Hannah Jones, imagine what they've done in the past. Mm -hmm. You know, imagine what other universities have done when political, like, I'm just saying like they did it, you know? So who's to say they haven't done it before and they gotten away with it? And that is like, I feel like that is really, that's really scary. You know what I'm saying? You know, public university salaries are public. Like you can mm -hmm. actually go, go look them up. And so um, my friend and I were doing this exercise about a particular university. And you can look at how much they were offered when they started, how much they make at the different um, steps. So whether they're an associate okay. professor, an assistant professor, a tenure professor, or a name mm -hmm. professor, you can start comparing and you can start to see. So like if I, I, I really would love to see the exercise of somebody taking that mm -hmm. data down and then saying white women came in and made this on average, black women came and made this on average at the same position yeah. in the same department, right? You know, where you would think that that's supposed to be the same. And you start looking at like, whoa, why are these things so different? And then looking at years that like, okay, what year did she come in? Okay, it makes sense that niche, okay, you see a shift in being able to kind of track those trends. But at public universities, you can see the discrimination right yes. there on paper, right mm -hmm. on paper. Yep. But it doesn't matter because guess what? Everybody gets a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. At the Amazon gift card. Yes. 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 Star, yes. Starbucks. Okay, I, I, I may be all right with Starbucks, but anyway, continue. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you want is you want your salary to reflect what you want. You go spend it at Starbucks, Target, or whoever you want. You know what? Even better. I like the way you business. think. <laughs> yes. Yes. Right. No. Exactly. And I guess, you know, we'll go ahead with our last question. Um, is this a win for education? Or do you all think that education is actually winning right now? When we think about all of the topics that we've discussed, when we think about everything that's going on in the media, you know, especially when we're looking at the critical race theory, everything that's just kind of taking place in, in the world of education. Is education winning? Do you think that we are winning? Are we winning as teachers or educators? Like, what's going on? Is, is this a win for us um, or no? Um, Jay? Oh. Honestly, I can sit here and just be like, oh, yes, we're winning. We're doing, you know, such a wonderful job. I think, I think it's, sometimes I feel like it's an illusion. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like, there's these little things that are thrown out there that give this illusion that we are making a, so much progress. Now, granted, we have definitely come a long way, you know, than we have in the past. Um, but it, I feel like it's going to be a continuous fight. Like it's always going to be ongoing to have to try to knock down 
little pieces of the system because this system is still here. Like it's, it hasn't been dismantled. So it's almost like a bridge. So you have, or your overpass, right? And you have the little columns that hold up the bridge. So it's almost like you knock down one of those little columns, they build it up really quickly with something else that is disguising an issue. And then it's like, okay, well, let me go to this other one, knock this down real quick. And then they build it back up with something else. When in reality, all of the columns, all of the whole bridge just needs to be destroyed and they need to build something else. And so I feel like until that happens, we may get some little wins here and there, but it's not, it's gonna be replaced by something else. Like something else is gonna come around the corner that we're gonna have to fight for or fight mm -hmm. against because of that system. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I love James? That. I love that. It's a system of consolation prizes. Yeah. Uh, as Jen was saying, it's just a system of consolation prizes. Um, it's not a win. Education is still fighting. Um, even now with CRT, uh, you know, looking down even in Florida. So what they're doing now in Florida is that they don't want to talk in the schools, which, as we know, educators never really talked CRT within the school system to begin right. with. But, you know, they, they, they teach more like to step away from my like, cultural biases and to, you know, to really just understand one another. So we ne never really taught CRT to begin with, but now what they want, so they want to make it so that they believe that now the colleges, like this is DeSantis saying that the colleges are indoctrinating the, kid, uh, the uh, teenagers that are going there. And so now they want to hand out surveys. So each school gets a survey. And so they want to make sure that conservative voices are not, you know, quote unquote, shut up. Um, and if they find out within these surveys that conservative voices, there's not like an abundance of them or whatnot, they will cut funding from these universities. That's what they want to implement. How can you even determine, you know, so, so what, what I gather from this is that you can shut anybody up except for, you know, the people that you don't want like to be like shut up and being that Ron DeSantis is a GOP member and, you know, he wants these types of ideologies to still spread. So it just benefits him instead of just actually spreading the truth and spreading that discourse so that people can have these difficult conversations like I was saying earlier. Um, education's fighting. Um, we're having less and less difficult conversations mm -hmm. and we're getting more and more t-shirts and pizza. Mm -hmm. Adrian. <clears throat> so y'all know I'm always an and person. So, um, I will answer this no different. I will stick with that. I, I think we're winning and we're losing, right? Um, I think there are some spaces. Honestly, COVID is almost a, a gift in a, as much as like, let me, let, me, let me phrase this so nobody like chops my head down. COVID, devastating, sad, never saying that. But if you have to do silver linings of things, there was a gift given to education to realize that education can look different than how we had currently envisioned it. And that like the few schools, cause there were a few, you know, doing like hybrid and e-learning and things like that. We had all heard the K-12, you know, <laughs> online, you know, commercials before, but like how many people were really accessing that as like, you know, mm -hmm. primary, how they were learning. So there's a gift that's been given to us to like rethink what schooling looks like in a reality space right not just to theorize about it like right. we were dumped into it and like mm -hmm. all of us at some point kind of did it you know um so in that way i do think there's some like real space for innovation and for progress and you know there's a movement of micro schools and like what does that look like and you know there's a homeschooling movement that a lot of these things were already kind of going but like amplified you know through COVID, and so i think in that space, yes. In the no space, we see things like what James is talking about, or you know, the push to get people back to normal. Like, well, how mm -hmm. have we decided what normal was? And like, why is the old normal what we want in a new normal? Like, why aren't we redefining and writing what we're calling normal? And so that's where I think we're failing, is that like instead of just taking advantage of this gift that's there, which is the the, the space 
we're kind of defaulting back to like comfort zones, defaulting yep. back to like old practices, defaulting back to what we know, um, which can be easy, you know, like that's kind of like, oh, we, we know this and, but we also know that that didn't really fully work before. So like, why don't we, it, it, I'm not a like burn the whole thing down, dismantle. I'm a burn some of it down, build some of it up, you know, and repair some of it, like the, that and, like some some spaces we need to just, hey, we need a new roof, let's work on that. Some of them, no, bulldoze that over, let's get rid of it. And other ones, it's like, we haven't even envisioned this. There's something about education that we haven't even thought of and seen and tested that we should be doing, you know, like, why isn't educa education happening in a company? Like, right, you know, like why aren't six-year-olds sitting in Microsoft, you know, offices and office spaces and learning in that space that's something we haven't even really talked about so like mm -hmm. having like those and mindsets um would be my answer to like are we winning losing failing succeeding it's like i think we're failing and succeeding all at one time so like mm -hmm. kind of at a at a zero uh standstill when it comes down to it mm -hmm. definitely calvin yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, education is the re reflection of our country, you know, divided, you know, we, we <laughs> you know, just like what they're doing in, you know, Florida with that bullshit and, you know, with Don De DeSantis in Detroit, we're doing the complete opposite, right? You know, we're attending the dismantling white supremacy PDs and we're talking about having pro-black expectations of teachers. You understand what I mean? And so honestly, you know, I feel like what Patina Love said is like being an abolitionist teacher is recognizing like your job, you're going to struggle, right? You know, but you've accepted mm -hmm. that, but that's okay, right? Because you're trying to build a better future for the future. Um, and so you may not be here to change it, but you might plant that seed. And so I feel like we fighting. I feel like they prepared though. I feel like they are organized. I feel like they are strategic. You understand? But they're playing games. They're playing a lot of games. They're, playing, they're putting a lot of distractions out there. You know, um, kind of what's happening with the uh, Olympian, you know, they're trying to paint her as this bad person. And mm -hmm. the same guy who's painting her as a bad person, he didn't even vote for the January 6th commission. You understand what I mean? And so mm -hmm. they're playing these games. And so I feel like we have to make sure we don't get played in the game. We stay smart. We stay tactic. We don't, we kind of need to turn that sensitive meter off. Because I feel like what GOP or what they try to do, they try to get us emotional. And I feel mm -hmm. like that's what they want us to do. Mm -hmm. you know and we get caught up in the flame i think we just need to just make sure that we keep fighting like adrian said i feel like we're fighting and losing but it ain't over and so mm -hmm. let's get it i'm ready <laughs> definitely absolutely and i see it i see it like a boxing match and i'm i'm thinking of it because i just i recently watched like a you know one that just came on youtube and then it just kind of continued with the youtube cycle but it was floyd mayweather and I, I can't remember who he fought at the time but it's like rounds right it's like you might win the first round because you're throwing these punches and then but the second round you may not win or even rounds one through four nobody throws punches everybody's just kind of boxing i mean you just kind of just dancing in the thing and then here comes round five now you just now it's like, okay, I've learned your side. I've learned my opponent here. So I already know what you're going to say or how you feel about this situation. So I know what you're probably going to do at this point. Um, and then round six, I might win. Round seven, you know, education might win. Round eight, you know, the government may win. So I just, I think I look at it as boxing. It's like, we're just going round from round. And the, the unfortunate thing is like with boxing, you know, it's 12 rounds. But it seems like for us, it's like an ongoing thing. It's like, does it ever end? Like, can we, you know, do, how do we win? How do we actually win? You know, in, in boxing, you got 12 rounds and someone has announced the winner. But for us, I just see, it just, to me, it seems like it's just an ongoing cycle. When we think we've conquered one aspect, here comes something else and, it's, and it continues. So I'm looking forward to the, you know, to the time in which we do actually win um, and we can promote, you know, uh, the best educational experience for our students as possible. And that's something that I'm really looking forward to um, in our near future. Real quick, that boxing analogy was amazing, especially with Mayweather, because he went against somebody that he should have never fought. We are in competition with people we should not be in competition with. Mm -hmm. These people are not in our weight class but it appears that they are it appears you know what i'm saying because they got a battery in their back but they got no platform they have no substance to them 
You understand what I mean? So, bro, is we got it, man. That was a mic drop moment, huh? Pass the collection plate, you know. That was that was a message. That was a word. All right. Yes. I All loved right. it. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone who decided to tune in and listen to our amazing conversation. So once again, we are tomorrow today and where we will continue to have these deep, enriching conversations to talk about what we can do today to make a imp positive impact on tomorrow. So make sure you stay tuned in. So go ahead and follow the podcast. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Thank you so much Bye. for coming through. Bye.